Hey Floss 2, welcome to Creative Whim Studio. Welcome back this week everyone. If you're new to my channel, this is a channel about all the creative whims that I do. I design cross stitch, I design punch needle, and I paint watercolors, I paint acrylics, folk art, angels, I'm kind of all over the place. So if you um, are returning, thank you so much for being here and helping me keep this thing going. <laughs> I hope everyone had a great week. It was a very productive week for me. Although it seems like more things keep coming up that I need to get done. So it's like, I feel like I get a step ahead and two steps back because things come in that I need to do. Anywho, uh, last week was, uh, well, last Saturday we went to a wedding and showed a couple of pictures of our friends. You know, it's so weird, you know, when you see not only your own kids grow up, but your friend's kids grow up and then they start getting married. It's exciting to see them grow up and start their lives, but it's like, you feel really old. <laughs> uh, and then Ellery was over on Thursday. <laughs> of course. Total blast. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw the video of her dancing and she's just a complete hoot. And then last night we went to Kevin's brother's house in Lansing, Michigan to celebrate uh, his other brother's 70th birthday. So that was really fun to see the whole family. Kevin is the youngest of four boys and uh, we only get to see them, you know, a couple times a year unless there's a wedding or an open house or something. So it was really nice that Mitch had his 70th birthday party at Russ and Cindy's house. So we were there last night. We got home, it's about an hour from us, a little over an hour to get to their house. So we got home, it was probably 12.30. And we let our dog, oh wait, 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 back up. While we were there, just before we left, like maybe 20 minutes, half hour before we left Russ and Cindy's house, they have two yellow labs and one of them got sprayed by a skunk. So Cindy comes running through the house, shut all the windows, shut all the windows. And I'm like, what's going on? She goes, oh, there's a skunk out there. And one of our dogs got sprayed. So we get home, 1230, let our dog out, let the dog back in. And I just, it hits you like a ton of bricks. That smell that she got sprayed by a skunk too. And I mean, it was the house stunk. I could get her outside and she's, it got in her mouth and she's like shaking her head and doing all this stuff and oh my gosh. So needless to say, I didn't get to bed till two o'clock in the morning. We had to wash her with, this recipe works. If this ever happens to your dog, you have to use this recipe. It's uh, a quart of hydro hydrogen peroxide, a quarter cup of baking soda, and two tablespoons of dish soap. And so we put her in a big tub. This is the second time this has happened to this dog. I don't know what the deal is. I have had a dog since I was six years old and I've never had a dog get sprayed by a skunk, but Athena has gotten sprayed twice. The first time she got sprayed was the night we were packing our vehicle to leave the next morning for the Nashville show with the, you know, cross stitch and punch needle. This was a couple of years ago. And we, so we had the doors open in the studio cause we're loading things up and she was outside running around and she comes in the studio and same thing that smell just hits you and it's like oh no and i mean i was upset that time because at that time i never had to deal with it so i didn't know that there was some remedy that worked and my mom was supposed to watch her the next day and i'm like well, she's not going to want this dog in her house if she smells like a skunk so i mean i knew no matter what i had to get her clean and this was probably 10 11 at night and i hadn't even packed my clothes for nashville or anything so <laughs> And it's so weird that it happens at these times when it's so late at night. Like if you're going to get sprayed, can't you do it? Well, first of all, just don't do it. But if you do it, 
why do you have to do it at you know 1230 at night or you know anyways so that's what we did last night so we text Kevin's brother and we're like I think I got sprayed by a skunk too and uh he says uh, Friday the 13th is skunk day. So to us Colgates from now on, Friday the 13th is officially called skunk day. <laughs> um, announcements. The calendars arrived, y'all. The calendars came. So Monday, I'm hoping, actually I'm hoping tomorrow to get them all signed. A lot of people wanted personalization on the calendar. So... Uh, I will be signing them probably all day Sunday so that Monday I can get them in the mail because I mean people are questioning left and right when is the calendar gonna ship and they never arrive this late I usually get them in July so I'm really shocked at how long it took to get them this year and then uh, the angel deck is not here yet I did email them and ask because everyone's asking me about it and they said anytime now they should get them in and then they'll start shipping them out so next couple of weeks I'll sh I should have those and then uh, Ivana's last video, the Twisted Stitcher, Ivana Pfeiffer, she has a YouTube or a false tube channel. You want to check her out for sure. She gives a lot of free tutorials on finishing, which are amazing, and she's so generous to do that. But she finished this for me. I don't know. I showed it a few videos ago. And anyway, she mentioned that she wanted to do the, the this finishing because she loved how it turned out. She wanted to do the finishing for the Punch Needle Primitive Stitchers magazine for the Christmas winter issue. So I told her, I said, well, keep all the trim that you used on mine and, you know, use it for yours. That way you don't have to order it or anything. And so that was kind of our exchange. I gave her all, all the trim and she did this for me. So uh, that's going to be, hers is bigger. You got to go watch her video. She did hers on 28 count. I think this is on 32 count. I think but she did hers on 28 count and so it's a bigger star and she put the little bell on each corner oh, it's to die for it's so cute so look forward to that if you don't have a subscription to the punch needle primitive stitchers magazine you're gonna want to get that because that's a cool finish and then somebody asked me I can't remember where it was it should be part of my questions and answers but since I'm talking about it I'm just gonna say it now she asked me if I'm going to be doing a series of those star patterns with different Christmas motifs inside and I think I am going to do that that was a brilliant idea I can do a Santa I mean all kinds of different things a little feather tree so I think I'm going to continue that line in that size of the star so that now that you have the finishing well when you get the finishing uh, instructions in the magazine then you'll be able to finish all of them the same way and put them on your tree that would be so stinking cute what else? New, um, oh yeah, you know, my pattern release is going to be in September. I wanted it to be mid-September, but I just, I'm buried in work. And so I've got all the covers pretty much done, but I have to write all the instructions. So that's what I'm going to be doing mostly this coming week is getting all that finished. So it'll probably be the following week before it's released because next weekend is our anniversary weekend and we're going out of town. So uh, it'll be the last week of September before my patterns are released. And in between there, I will do a video once I get all the finishing, the fully finished pieces done. I started on that too. I only have one done out of all of them. So I, I'm just buried, you guys. Just buried. Question and answer. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. My bad. Somebody asked through email, so I'm not going to say their name because I feel if somebody emails me, they want it to be private. So I'm not going to say the name. But she asked if she, if I thought I'd be attending StitchCon. I got on the wait list the day that you could sign up for the wait list, and I have not received any email yet from them. So it just depends uh, if there's room for, you know, because you have to watch Just Keep Stitching, uh, Pam and Steph. They go into detail of how that whole process works as far as, when someone said, you know, they, they offer it to all the people that went last year first. And then those folks that can't go, let them know. And then they start going through the wait list and adding people in. So I don't know where I'm at on the wait list. I, you know, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to go or not. But if I get in, I'm definitely going to go. Because I can't wait to meet everybody. It'll be so fun. 
Don Brinker asked, she said she loved the sampler that I showed last week in last week's video. She wanted to know when that would be released. I want to hold all my samplers off for um, the Nashville market. I think that's the perfect place to introduce something that's so new to me. And there may be four, depending on if they all get stitched in time. I did send that one out. And then the one I designed this past week, I'm sending out Monday. Uh, and then I've got a good jump on my third sampler. So by the end of this month, I will have four of them designed and I'm gonna get them in the mail and hopefully they come back in time for Nashville. Nan Russell asks, did you mention what you named that sampler? The one I showed last week is called Hope, wait, Faith, Hope, Peace, and Love. And then Glenn Baker, she was mentioning the wool keeper cross stitch pattern that was in the summer 2019 punch needle and primitive stitchers magazine she wants to stitch it but she can't get a hold of the magazine or something anyway she was asking me when will it be available on etsy and i have to hold it off for an entire year because that is the agreement i have with deb at um, punch needle primitive stitchers magazine so it will be summer of 2020 before i can have that pattern released to everyone. That's it for questions and answers. Okay, whips. So whips. I'm still working on the fox uh, painting. I, The last time I showed it, I only had uh, that fox painted. So now I have the other fox almost done. He's not quite done. Started working on the snail and some more of the mushrooms, but uh, that probably won't get done now till October because I need to focus on my pattern release and all of that jazz. And then some other works in progress. Well, no, I'm not going to show that. I was going to show the third sampler that I'm working on just so you can see where I'm at in the process. And I noticed somebody did a I think it's called she called it design with me and I haven't watched it I think it was Lindy stitches I don't know somebody somebody somewhere mentioned that they did a design with me video and I thought how fun would that be so that you could see the creative process so I'm I'm just curious if you are interested in watching something like that. I would probably do a live video and just so you can watch like how I do it. I don't know. Just let me know if you're interested in something like that. That might make me too nervous. I don't know. Okay, whips. Then I got finishes. I finished these four paintings this week. And you might be thinking, well, why would you start new paintings when you don't have your other ones done? These paintings were close to being done in the first place. When I cleaned my studio that one day uh, to make room for my new printer, I found these paintings and all they really needed was, I probably put an hour in on each of them, if that, mostly just uh, fine tuning things with color pencil. So here's one of them. And I'm going to be doing these in cross stitch as a set. So all four of them will be within one, uh, one pattern. So these two are the bunnies with the blue border and then there's two here with birds. Those are little snowdrop flowers and these little red birds with the blue flowers. So I think these four paintings would be so cute as cross stitch uh, like all together where you can you could stitch them all as one or you can stitch them individually so that is going to be in the works sometime I don't know when exactly and then I want to show you the sampler I finished last week and uh, Donna Fidawa is going to stitch it for me and it's called pet all the dogs and when I started this sampler I didn't know what it was going to be. That's what I like about designing these samplers, that I just kind of go to the computer and start designing motifs, and then I think, oh, that would make a cute border, so I do a repeat of it, and then I decide if I like it as a border or not. 
I knew I wanted dogs in it for some reason, I guess because I'm a dog person, but uh, then it, I just decided to make it all about dogs. So it's called Pet All the Dogs, and let me come show you a little bit closer. Pet All the Dogs, and there's this little dog border at the bottom, can you see it? Is that not adorable? And there's five other dogs in there in that big red house. I love the trees. And then the angel over the house. So that's called Pet All the Dogs. That is going out Monday to get stitched by Donna. And I'm going to have this stitched on 35 count. And I'm going to have her do it one over two. I'm so curious to see what that looks like. I know one over two makes it look a little more primitive. And, and I think for samplers, I think that would look really cool. So that's going to be on Tin Roof. Uh, Weeks Dye Works Tin Roof um, Linen. And then I had this one partially done, so I just went ahead and finished it. And this one is called Such a Fright. And I'm going to show you the linen. I, If anyone knows of a nice, uh, deep orange linen, let me know, please, in the comments. Anyway, it says Halloween Night is Such a Fright. And then it's got all the little cute Halloween motifs around in the border. This is going out Monday to be stitched as well. I did order some orange fabric online, but it's so hard to tell what it's going to look like, well, you know, when you're looking on your computer. So I ordered Weeks Dye Works. I have a yard of carrot. Yeah, this is carrot. And this is uh, 36 count. So this that is going to be a, it'll be probably pretty small to be really cute is a pillow, but, or a pin keep or something. So I love this. And then I ordered through one, two, three stitch. I ordered a couple small pieces just to see if I would like them. And I don't like them at all. This one is 35 count pumpkin weeks dye works. And it's just too bright. I'm sorry, too, too bright. So I'm going to use Priscilla and Chelsea's uh, coffee tea dye tutorial and see if I can get this a darker color. And then this is um, even weave, wait, 28 count orange jobelin, e jobelin <laughs> even weave, easy for me to say. And I don't like this color at all either. It's just too bright for my taste. So I'm going to also coffee tea dye those. So if you can kind of see the all three of them together, carrot definitely is, carrot's the big one on the bottom, definitely is more my style. So that was, I guess, part of my haul, but since I was talking about that Halloween cross stitch, I wanted to show that to you. And then what else? I think that's it for finishes. And then haul, I ordered from a Kitten Stitcher, dot com Teresa Vanette she's also on floss tube I know I mentioned her almost every week now but she was showing on her last video uh, the books that she has in her online store of samplers and I was stoked so I went and ordered a couple so I bought this one samplers by Re Rebecca Scott and I got a gallery of American samplers um, the Theodore H Kepnick collection. So I bought those two. I'm starting to build up a little library of samplers. Of samplers, no, of sampler books. <laughs> what else do we have? Oh, and then I got the biggest Hob Lob haul ever. It's too much to even show you. But what I did, maybe I can insert some pictures, but I ordered a bunch of round like wall hanging pieces and I'm going to paint angels in the round and then adhere them attach them to those pieces so it's kind of like a frame around it, it they're gonna be so cool but I bought a bunch of them like a lot of stuff for painting angels because like I said winter's coming God, sounds like Game of Thrones winter's coming and I am going to be painting angels okay so last week the question well first of all last week the 
surprise is um, pick a pattern. Oh, I have, I forgot, I have some finishes of cross stitch to show you guys. You know, I have a, I kind of struggle whether I should show you everything as it comes in because I think it, then it's not as exciting when you see it fully finished or when it's released because it's like, yeah, I already seen that. I don't know. I don't know. I do have at least one that has come in that I have not put on any social media and I'm not going to. I'm going to hold it off for Nashville, but I don't know. I get excited, guys, and I just want to show you. Well, I'm going to start out with uh, Be Kind because I got this back from Jerry. She backstitched the wings for me. And is that not way better? Isn't that cute? Uh, so that is not going to be released in September just for the fact that I've already, I'm already buried in what I'm trying to get done now. So I may release this. I'll have another release in January. I don't think I'm gonna hold it off for market. I'm gonna do it in January because I think in winter, it might be kind of nice to be stitching something that is kind of springy. And then I have this, The Magic of Christmas. Is that not adorable? I love the way that turned out. It looks like really, well here, let me show you the painting. Uh, this is actually a print adhered to wood, but that's the uh, painting. And then the cross stitch. So that's super cute. That will probably be released in January as well. And then I received Hope for the World. I love how that turned out. I love it on this. This is Weeks Dye Works. Oh, geez. I want to say Havana. I'm not sure, but that, I don't know when I'm going to release that. That will probably wait until Nashville because I don't really want to release that in January because after Christmas, people don't want to stitch, or yeah, after Christmas, people don't want to stitch Santa's, correct? So I'll probably hold that off until Nashville as well. What else? <laughs> Yeah, so now, the winner last week, uh, the prize is a pattern of your choice from my Etsy shop. And the question was, do you like stitching samplers? And I will insert the video of the random, the YouTube random comment picker here. Okay, getting ready to do the drawing for this week. And the question was, do you like stitching samplers? And let's see who wins. And the prize this week was a pattern of your choice from my Etsy shop. The winner is Laureen McQuaid. She said, I love stitching samplers. Currently, I am stitching a Hands Across the Sea sampler, one of my favorite sampler designers. And she chose Green 44 for the Chinese fortune teller. Thank you for everyone for participating in the drawing. It sounds like most of you like samplers, so that's really exciting. Congratulations, Laureen. If you could please email me at this email address right here and let me know your mailing address and let me know what pattern you'd like me to ship you. I can get that out right away to you. And then this week, uh, I this week's question is, are you attending Galleria? You can just say yes or no. I mean, it doesn't have to be elaborate, but I am not and I wish I was because I watched Teresa Vanette's last video, Kitten Stitcher on Floss Tube, and she was talking about how she has a stinking blinking conference room <laughs> as her, instead of having it in a room, she has a conference room. It's gonna be amazing. And y'all that are going are so lucky. I would love to go. So that's another thing on my list for next year is to hopefully get into Galleria. I'm on the waiting list for that too. All right. Oh yeah, you know, this past week, September 11th, I tell you that is such an emotional day still for me. I don't know about y'all, but I think it is for pretty much everybody. Uh, I can remember that day like it was yesterday. And our kids were already at school. And I, you know, at that time I didn't have my studio. We had just moved into our house. So my studio was not ready. We, I was working in the basement and I had a girl 
um, that helped me paint and she, you know, it was before I really got into the pattern business a lot. It was more licensing back then. And I can remember the painting I was working on and when all that went down, I told Ginger, I said, you know, you can go home if you want. And she's like, no, I'll stay. But I, I didn't want to work, but like she was there. So I felt like I should be working. But I mean, I took a lot of breaks and I'd go and watch TV and just cry. It was terrible. And um, so yeah, a lot of people were posting videos and different things on Facebook. And I watched one and it just brought so a flood of emotions back that I didn't watch any more videos. Cause I'm like, I'm just gonna get super depressed. It's just so, so, so sad. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention. Oh, you know what I wanna do is show you my calendar. I want to show you my calendar uh they come in they came just got in and everyone's been asking where's my calendar because i did pre-orders and there, i'll tell you why i did pre-orders because every year this calendar sells out and people don't get one and some people have been collecting them since i started and the very first calendar was 1999 that i designed and i've been doing this every year since and it, may, it broke my heart when people that are like, I've been collecting this all these years and I can't get one. And you know, I would contact Legacy and they're like, they're out, it's out of print, we can't get any more. And anyway, so I did pre-orders and I let everybody know you can order it and reserve yourself one now. And I ordered twice as many of the calendars as I normally do. And I think there's still like 30 left in my Etsy shop. So if you do want one, go to my Etsy shop. Here's the address, look up at your screen right now. Here's the address, plus you can, in the description box below, there's a link. So here's the cover. Here's the January image. February, yeah, dogs. <laughs> March. April. I love that one. May. It'd be cute as well. And a cross stitch one. June. What's that say? The most valuable gifts can't be bought. They're the result of love, respect, and gratitude. Isn't that the truth? July. I love the hot dogs and hamburgers in this one. August. September. Your friendship makes life shine. October. November. And December. Cute little mice. So there you have it. That is the 2020 bear calendar. And so I sign and date all of them on the inside cover. And then if you want one personalized, uh, just you put it in the notes when you order and check out at Etsy and I will write, you know, not a paragraph or anything, but people are saying, you know, have a great year to so-and-so and anyways, you can have it shipped to somebody else if you want to. Okay. I think that's it. I think there was one more thing, but I, don't, I can't remember what the heck it would be. So, oh, I know what it is. We have the dumpster. My husband's over there working right now. So if you hear all that rumbling, that's what that is. So the dumpster, dumpster has arrived. Today is Saturday. It's almost three o'clock. After I'm done filming this, not refilming, recording this, I'm gonna go over there and we're gonna just start busting But I'm getting stuff cleaned out because I don't know if you know from previous videos, I've mentioned that I'm getting the pattern business out of this side of my studio and it's going on the other side of the studio. Right now, what's over there, we have stuff left over from when we had primitive folk and we're talking 20 years ago and frames and I got a lot of licensed product over there that I will be donating to uh, Holy Rosary for their auction dinner and for their Santa's workshop so just cleaning it out and then we're gonna hire someone we need a new roof on the studio and then we're gonna hire someone to put walls up over there and make it a nice work area for filling orders and storing all of the patterns. So I'm stoked about that. I want that done before the snow flies. So uh, it will make our lives so much easier and more organized and streamlined. 
everything. So super excited about that. All right, last thing is the Chinese fortune teller. Oh man, I didn't write it down. Oh, hopefully it's, hopefully it's still on the page. I think it was this one. Well, it is now. <laughs> Nanette McDouglas Dykes said blue one one. Did I even mention what the prize was this week? I don't know that I did. I gave you the question, which is, are you attending Galleria? The prize is, if your name is drawn, you get to pick a pattern from my Etsy shop. I'm sorry. I'm just so, I'm just so out of sorts right now. B L U E one one. Tell business advice. Well, something actually happened recently. Uh, someone contacted me because they were afraid that somebody was ripping off my art. Uh, and so I want to address how I handle things like that. Because there, I mean, there has been blatant ripoffs throughout my career where I was at Bronner's. Bronner's is in Frankenmuth, Michigan, and it's maybe a half an hour from us. And it's the largest Christmas shop in the world. And I one time was there and there was a product that obviously someone took, let's say they took this exact painting, but they painted it in their hand, but it was exact the kids, that many kids in the same position. It was blatant, a blatant rip off. And when something like that happens, what would happen is you send them a cease and desist letter and you tell them, you know, you can't sell that anymore. And if you do, I will be contacting my lawyer and we'll have a lawsuit on our hands. And usually that's all it takes because people know they're in the wrong. They, they know if they've stolen your artwork. So they usually cease and desist. There are, however, times when something is really similar. Like there was this one guy, he was like, he would take a portion of my painting and a portion of another artist's painting and combine them and make his own. But you could tell that, let's say that teddy bear, you could tell he got the teddy bear holding the birdhouse was mine, but he made, but he changed the rest of it so much, the rest of the painting so much that he considered it his own. It's you, you can run yourself ragged in the licensing business. If you, are constantly running after after things that look like yours. If it's if it's obvious that they stole it from you, or worse yet, in the licensing industry, this has happened too, where a company over in China, let's say, will get a hold of your artwork, they can lift it from the internet easy enough and make products with it. That is an that is an outright crime right there. And that happens. And so when that happens, usually you can get, you know, some monetary, if you have it copywritten, if you've registered your copyrights, you can actually get paid on the sales of what they sold. And then they have to cease and desist as well. But there's a lot of times when things look like you can tell maybe your art inspired this artist to paint that her version of it or whatever. You know, I'm to the point in my career and in my age, I guess it is too, is that if it's not a blatant ripoff, I usually let things slide. And I'm not saying that so that people go out and copy my work. <laughs> but um, I have always had the attitude of, you know what, leave them in the dust. You keep moving forward. I keep painting this. I, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to keep making new stuff. They won't be able to keep up with me is kind of how I feel. Uh, but but then again, like I said, if it's if it's an obvious ripoff, then I definitely take that up with that person or their agent or however it works. And like I said, people know when they have stolen your artwork and they will shut it down. Uh, so anyway, that's I guess my business advice then to you is if you are in business and you're an artist or whatever, uh, you know, look at it look at it and decide, you know, is this a real ripoff or did, or was their painting just inspired by something that you painted? Uh, and you know, you have to, 
you can't dwell on that stuff. It will eat you alive and it will, it will ruin it for you. I know there's artists that have quit licensing because of getting ripped off. And then by doing that though, then you're not sharing your art with the world. Um, and I know, I know there's, I've heard through other people's floss tubes that there's been cross stitch designers that people would take their pattern. I don't know if they scan it in or whatever, but they share it on the internet. And so people are downloading it for free and they aren't paying for it. And I know that it has turned off designers and they have quit designing. Uh, as far as my, uh, that's another reason I'm not crazy about having PDF downloads for my cross stitch, but I do have some of those on Etsy, but not all my designs are available that way because somebody can download it and then make copies of it and sell it and make money and profit off your hard work. To me, that's just disgusting, but it happens. And if I found out about it, I would definitely order a cease and desist. That has happened, uh, God, recently somebody got a hold of me and said that they were doing this and they were selling it actually on Amazon. And I got a hold of the person. I said, uh-uh, no, this is a crime. And if you don't you know, want to deal with my lawyer, then you need to take this off your site. And they do. Uh, they do because they know they're wrong. <laughs> so um, anyway, that is my business advice is just don't let that stuff eat you up. Uh, I, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of people. I've been in the industry long enough that people recognize my work and someone will send me something and say, Teresa, this looks like your work. I just wanted you to know, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I usually check into it and, and make my decision whether it's a blatant ripoff or it's just an inspiration or whatever. Um, but so far I've never had to take anyone to court because it'd be a waste of time, money and energy, unless it was, you know, some huge, I mean, if it was monetarily worth it, it might be, it might be something I would do, but you know, I'm just not into suing. It's just not my thing. But um, anyway, that's my business. Business advice is just to move forward and um, stay positive and keep creating because you know what? People that rip you off, they can't keep up with your creative mind. You just keep creating, you keep being you and, and let them just fall to the wayside. So anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for being here. Please ask any questions that you would like. And uh, I appreciate this community so much. And I appreciate your support. So have a great week. And I hope you get a lot of stuff done. Bye.